Now, this is a story we first ran in March from VOA's Persian News Network reporter, Tala Hadavi. Tala went inside the world of ultimate fighting to produce a documentary about Iranian-Swedish mixed martial arts fighter, Reza Mad Dog Madadi. Tala followed Mad Dog for weeks as he prepared for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Madadi compiled a respectable 13-3 and 0 career record in the UFC, but in August his life took a serious turn. We'll tell you more after our segment with Tala. Check it out. Tehran Normak to the world. For 12 or 13 years. خونک زندگی میکردیم و از اون بعد اومدم سوئد I did a four and a half minute uh, feature on him and I right away had a feeling that I this is a guy that deserves to have his story told and um, and so I kind of followed him for the next year and a half and then when he made it to the UFC which is the the best league in the world in this sport I contacted him so I traveled to Sweden for two weeks and then we went to Brazil which were which was actually where he had his next fight yeah, so we traveled for four weeks together, and I really got to know him. And now I have a one-hour documentary about him. So, uh, what's interesting is that this guy was an immigrant who moved to Sweden when he was 13 years old, and then he had a lot of crisis in his life. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so Reza actually grew up without a father. Father, His mother was 40 years older than him. Uh, he's the ninth kid in the family. And um, it was very hard for him to come as a 13-year-old child to Sweden and sort of adapt, because already he was, you know, formed somewhat into the Persian culture. and. With Sweden being so different, it was hard for him to adapt. And so, yeah, I think the sport of MMA really saved him. And he talks about that in the sport, in the, in the documentary. Tell us a little bit about how you were able to put it off. Because you shot, wrote, and directed this documentary. And uh, it was 40 hours of footage, if I'm correct. Yes. And, and, and here we have, what is this? This is a, a stack of your, this, this is a is stack the... of your interviews. This is this transcription of the entire 40 hours. Okay. So I, you know, one of the, you know, this was the biggest project that I've ever done. And one of the things that I, I made a good decision now looking back was that at every time I would come back at night after shooting all day, I would digitize it. And so I would really archive it really well where I would put day one and then all the elements of that day. And um, you can see that actually here. And that really helped me in staying for organized. So when I came back to the States to start sort of transcribing and start thinking about writing the story, um, I was very organized and it was very easy for me to find everything. And yeah, I, I shot it all by myself. So, you know, there are some audio problems. For instance, in Brazil, one morning, the first morning we got there, I, we were both jet lagged. So we got um, to the hotel in the morning and I knocked on his door at 7 a.m. And his manager, which was staying with him, said, uh, he's upstairs. So I ran upstairs to catch him this first morning, you know. Um, and I didn't have my, my audio equipment with me. So, you know, those things happen when you're by yourself. But I shot, edited, and wrote it. And it was an incredible experience. You know, you see him in the film, and then you see him in real life. Is he like an angry person in real life, or is he like calm and chill? No, actually not at all. He is, he's not so calm. He's mm -hmm. very, you know, he has a big personality but he's a complete different per person when he gets into the cage. The cage, he is very aggressive. He has very good conditioning, so he's very strong and he just attacks. He's fearless. And you see it in the footage in the documentary right before the fight is starting and you see he's just in the zone, you know? I want to go to the first time. I don't want to go to the first time. Why do I have two sons? I have two sons. Why do I have two sons? Why do I have two sons? Why do I have two sons? I was in the locker room with him filming before the fight, and he's a complete different person. Did you get a chance to fight him? No. <laughs> and I think I'm happy about that. Okay, I probably yeah, sure. would be pretty beat up. But tell me something. How was the response from your audience uh, for him and for yourself? Actually, it's been really interesting because immediately when we aired it on January 18th on PNN, Immediately, I got messages, multiple hundreds of messages. I think I've personally gotten close to 300 messages of young Iranian men, usually, that just felt like they've been so inspired by the story. And I've been in touch with Reza, and he's told me that it's been 
uh, a really incredible response to the film, but I was just at home in Sweden and uh, I met him and he said, Tala, like, look, I've gotten probably more than 5,000 messages on my, and private messages on my Facebook where people have said, thank you, you changed my life. You know, some people said, you know, they were drug addicts, they were involved with really wrong things and now they're not going to do it because they feel so inspired by the story. So it's, it's really a very rewarding um, sort of end to something that I've worked pretty hard on. Again, Tala Hadavi with VOA's Persian News Network. Now, to update you, since we first ran this story, Reza Madadi's life has taken a turn. He is now in jail after being found guilty in August of grand larceny. He and two accomplices were convicted of a smash-and-grab raid on a high-end handbag boutique in Sweden. Madadi was fined and sentenced to 18 months in prison and was released by the UFC, an unfortunate turn for the 35-year-old fighter.